Good morning, everybody. Sorry about that little glitch there. Uh, that was a pre-record that just kicked in. You're listening to Dennis O'Connor this morning on Awakening and Health once again. And we are going to uh, take a very interesting look at a few things that have been happening fairly recently. I'm just going to do a quick uh, check on my audio and uh, just make sure that this is going to play properly. The Department of Defense. Okay, good. We seem to be ready to go. So what we're going to talk about this morning is uh, the events that happened in Maui with these fires that went on. And I've got a few clips lined up that I'm going to be playing for you. And we're just going to go through and uh, make some comments as we're going to listen to them. Some people are going to be probably watching this a little bit later. So uh, uh, I do apologize if I'm talking over the clips, but uh, this is more for the radio audience this morning. But I'm just going to play the first uh, little clip for you now. Spends about $1 billion annually developing directed energy weapons, such as high energy lasers and high powered microwaves. These weapons can disrupt or destroy their targets at the speed of light. For example, DoD has developed high energy lasers that have successfully shot down drones, but speed isn't their only advantage. They're also less expensive per use than traditional weapons like guns and missiles. Despite those potential advantages, DoD has had trouble getting these technologies out of the lab and into service. The Army has developed a detailed transition plan to support moving these weapons into the next stages of development. We recommended that the Navy and the Air Force develop similar plans. Now that was a clip there from the Department of Defense in America. And <clears throat> the reason I'm playing that is because there's some rumors going around in relation to these fires about how suspicious the activity was and initially i was pretty skeptical about uh, about i think i guess some of the rumors that were going ar around about it and i just started to look into some some interesting things and investigate it and i came across another article here from a henry trey obering the third who was a retired army uh, colonel who wrote a paper directed energy weapons are real and disruptive and the paper is fairly kind of thorough it goes through kind of different types of weapons what they are uh, how they work and it talks about how they can be deployed how training is needed and how they can be very specifically targeted uh, in toward towards uh, towards different things and then there's uh, another little article here, and it is from, let's see if I can find it. It's from, it's Fast Facts, it's from another government department, and it's got quite interesting pictures of, uh, of what these things look like, and essentially they look like these, uh, these kind of cameras, I guess, uh, that can obviously throw out these lasers, and they can, they're mounted on, uh, on different, different kind of structures. And this particular article I'm looking at here talks about high power microwaves, which are in the small wavelength, millimeter waves, which are slightly uh, bigger, and then high end lasers. And it goes through the different uh, methods of what they might be used for. And the things they can be used for are anything from disabling uh, certain things to destroying them completely. And the terms they use there, use there deny is the one they talk about when they're disabling. Degrade or damage means when they want to uh, make things stop working and destroy, obviously, is self-explanatory. And the, there's a little uh, video embedded in there. And what we can see when we're looking at that is a drone which is flying in midair. This, by the way, is from, I think, 2013. So this is quite a while ago. And this drone slowly but surely catches fire and then mm -hmm. kind of plunges into the sea. And if you look at it quite closely, you can see what almost looks like this this uh, white beam hitting this drone before the drone does actually plunge into the sea. Now, the next uh, clips I have are from, one is from China and one is from Japan. And the one from China, it's uh, it shows these construction workers, I guess, or uh, arborists, who have these little machines and they're now using those to be more specific in getting tree branches away from power lines. And the clip is very interesting. What we see is uh, these fairly thick branches and trees which are being lasered um, apart, I guess, and cut with these machines which, 
which uh, deliver these beams. And uh, there's a, I'm just watching now another clip, but quite a thick uh, log, which is just perfectly cut in two. And you can kind of see the, the blackened, charred remains of the stumps of these logs. And there's another one that's a little bit later. It comes from Japan, and essentially it shows the same thing, construction workers who are using a machine that looks a little bit different. And uh, again, they're kind of with pretty good precision, just uh, taking these branches out the way from power lines. And uh, it almost looks like the, the person there who's controlling that has got a almost a PlayStation kind of handset as he's directing these little beams to take these trees down. So uh, why might I be talking about this? There's a couple of reasons I am. And one of the things that comes to mind is the thing called criminal malfeasance. And that essentially is when you knowingly do something criminal. And we have this absolute wealth of, um, of information about uh, malfeasance from big corporations involved in all sorts of sh uh, sketchy and shady kind of carryings on, I guess, for one of a, a better a better word. Um, they, we have environmental cases, uh, drug drug cases. I've mentioned Johnson and Johnson, and uh, the the big the massive case they lost recently for being aware of carcinogenics in baby powder, and even they're aware that this the baby powder is still being sold on shelves mm. in different countries. And when I was looking into malfeasance in relation to environmental issues, I actually found it quite difficult to come across things that are quite specific. And one of the reasons for that is uh, that often when cases are won, we have uh, non-disclosure agreements, which are actually signed. So that means that uh, if somebody is proved right, in order to get a payout, if that's uh, what was ordered by a judge, the people cannot talk about it. And the the information of these court cases actually is actually hidden, so it's it's tricky to to validate um, or, or I guess get a lot of evidence about some of the the nefarious things that some of these very very big corporations are getting up to. And what this is doing now, it's going to lead into another clip from a resident in Maui, and uh, I'll just let this play for you, and you can hear what this fellow has to say. Someone please debunk me. You can actually evict the Maui wildfire survivors? Like, tell me you're joking. Do not give up Maui. Do not let them take your land. I just saw this morning, just now on TikTok, they are giving eviction notices to people whose houses didn't burn down. Like, I wasn't in the conspiracy camp where, like, space lasers caused the Hawaiian wildfires on purpose, but I sure as shit knew BlackRock, Vanguard, and other bankers weren't going to give up a fire sale. So, like, before I freak out and, like, start sharpening the guillotines, like, maybe this is just a one-off, right? This Lahaina shit is insane. I have a friend who lost his home. He lost everything. But this isn't for him. This is somebody else by him. They didn't lose their home. But they're about to because the mayor is evicting the entire f building. Some of the only people that still had homes, and they're evicting them. They have 45 days. Pause to read. I, I wish I didn't f to read. You mean to tell me that if the sus wildfire didn't make me homeless, the government is now going to, even though I had a home to go back to? And, like, does the excuse even make sense to anyone? It's like you have no press release on how you're going to rehabilitate the area, but you will hand me an eviction notice and tell me I have 45 days to get out, but, like, I'll get my deposit back. Uh, just don't be late on rent. Like, you haven't even talked to FEMA on how you're going to rehouse everybody that is actually homeless. Like, we're supposed to believe you now? These are the last people on this island in this little area that have a home still, and they're kicking them out of it. I hope this is the straw that breaks the camel's back. Let me make sure I understand everything about this cod-forsaken timeline so I'm not overreacting. You mean to tell me that a sus wildfire wiped out all the homes of all the locals living in an area that's coincidentally the most valuable in all of Maui, and the insurance companies won't cover the majority of the damages, but also coincidentally, all the rich bankers and real estate developers are willing to buy the land for cheap, like they won't give you full price because the building's missing, but they'll give you more than what it's worth now. And, and like... This is this is all legal. Like this shit, this shit's okay. Like it, like if I just blow all my money on like guillotines and like Kevlar and rounds, like am I? Is this like I, I don't know? Like it, hey, conservatives, this is your time to shine. Second Amendment, tell us what it's for, man. I don't know. Am I overreacting? A am I overreacting? S somebody please debunk me. Like this cannot be legal. So interesting stuff there from a fellow who. Uh 
is in the middle of the, that situation there in Maui. And just in case you didn't get a, a grip on what he was saying, essentially they have this area where the people who have houses remaining are being given eviction notices in the midst of a of a disaster. And, and the clip there actually showed one of those notices that was handwritten and again, these things could be made up. They could be uh, they could be kind of put together. But it's fairly convincing when you when you just keep on seeing and hearing more and more people uh, just uh, you know talking about these same things. I don't know if you also picked up there, but that land where these fires uh, rushed through had been in the eye of building developers for quite a while, and it was owned by uh, traditional elders who refused to sell and refused to have this area developed and now what seems to be happening that uh, conveniently these these houses and buildings have burned down and there's a few more clips which we'll which we'll get to later where we see that um now the the developers are actually left in a in a position to snap all this valuable land up where these houses are already destroyed now the next clip I'm going to play gives us a picture of aerial footage from uh, these disasters and there's no audio on this one so I'm just going to uh, talk over it and what is, what's very very striking with this one is that we have these houses that are absolutely demolished, there's nothing left there's no structure left we just have these blocks that are that have just disintegrated fully now, while that is kind of fairly unusual in itself, the thing that really stands out is that between these houses and between these blocks, we have trees that are untouched. And to my understanding, usually if we have a wildfire, it's the bush and the shrubs and the trees that uh, that catch on fire and then these fires then get transferred to houses. But um, it's it's just really phenomenal just seeing block after block of houses with nothing left the infrastructure the beams the some of the walls all they're collapsed in a heap they're, 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 there's just flattened rubble and in between the houses are trees that seem untouched and this this was the thing that uh, you know I, I saw a lot of people uh, kind of talking about and mentioning which piqued my interest a fair bit in in what the heck was going on it, and I ran this past some people who actually had experience with wildfires in Australia and they saw firsthand what wildfires look like and the damage it looks like and uh, they kind of assure me that what I'm looking at is, uh, is uh, just far from a natural occurrence. Um, again, I'll just, uh, I'll just add that uh, I'll be making a video recording of this and I'll be putting this on my channel Awakening in Health and you can find that on shoot and on YouTube if uh, anybody listening here just wants to look into this just a little bit more. Um, the other thing that just uh, seemed to be coming through was this, the idea that um, the there was a uh, police that were having cordons around the island when these fires were in place. And I'm just going to start another little clip here. That's metal too. Yeah. Damn. That's what most of the roofs here are made out of. It's like, I can't believe the firemen aren't here blowing this out. I know. I don't know what's going on. Well, there's no cell service. There's no internet. Like, right, but this fire is huge. I know. It's like, just jumping everywhere. I'm sure they know it's here, right? right? Look at this. Like, this is... Oh, God damn it. His motorcycle's getting a clutch. That's all right. Let it burn. Just get out of there. It took us... <clears throat> like 30 minutes to get out of, our, out of our neighborhood and usually takes us you know turning out of your neighborhood doesn't take long oh god that's good all right everybody let's go it's go time did you have a to-go bag ready or just yeah stuff? Mm -hmm. yeah so you'd already had to go bags ready because we knew maybe worst case scenario just in case you know we we packed a few things just like you know bare essentials and if uh my diploma. 
We were just being chased by the fire, and that's where yeah. we were. Yeah, we were just being chased because we tried to get back in our car and try to drive away from it, and then we just got trapped from the people getting out of their car. So yeah. we just jumped in the water because we were right next to it. Yeah, we got it. It's all you. <laughs> Thank God. Wow. I can't believe how... Whoa! Yeah, it was just backed up all the way to Front Street, and... Uh, we were debating on going left or right on Front Street, and we, we went right originally and then parked our car at this children's church. I think it's called Children of the Rainbow. Dude! Oh, whoa, put your earbuds in. It's gonna be fine. It's fine. The firemen are right here. It's just... Wow. Tried to run up and out uh, to head north, um, but that was totally blocked by just falling things, debris. Milo, we're trying to get there, honey. I can't, we're fine. We're fine. We just have to get right. this traffic. Oh no. Don't say oh no. It's gonna be fine. The, the firemen are right here. They're not yeah, gonna they're, let. They're not gonna let anything. So we ran back, got in our car, and tried to drive left on Front Street, and it was just totally blocked up, and no, no cars were moving. I just can't freaking see. Yeah, just, just, hey, just, just put your phone down, all video. So it's fairly uh, disturbing footage, and it's, uh, you know, you can see these people driving through these kind of flaming areas with, uh, with fire going on all around them it must have been fairly terrifying and the point there is that it seemed that all the cars were blocked in there was no traffic moving and uh, those two young people actually had to get out of the car and take refuge in the water and uh, there was even you know a hint there that uh, that uh, the, the emergency services were 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 kind of not in full operation and uh, just going to start another clip here again good luck look at this holy shit this is a nightmare I don't know where he's going probably to block our street they're going to barbecue all these people down in Lahaina we're all trapped down in here they're blocking off all exits and everyone is just stuck going in a circle in a fire pit so again another uh, report from Bro, somebody who's uh, in, in just an incredible way just uh, talking about and you can see these pictures here of these people just sitting in cars as these fires are raging around them and the cars are not moving and uh, I'll be at, at the end of uh, fairly soon I'll be playing another clip about a fellow who was saying that the police were actually blocking traffic at the end of the street but it's 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 really well, quite phenomenal. Right. And we'll just start another clip. Uh, again, this one has aerial footage of the destruction uh, in Lahaina. We're all hurt. We're all grieving. You know, a lot of our hearts were here, and it's now completely gone. We're still here, and we have to keep it that way. We have lost everything. So the fact that they they're already thinking that they probably can't afford to rebuild. You know, a lot of people's life savings are in the house. Everything to do with the state has been bad. Everything to do with the community has been awesome. We're, we're focusing on what's most important. That is making sure our community members are well taken care of. That is what's most important. The state, their focus is all over the place and they expect us to trust them. I do not. 99% of the community members that I've spoken to, they don't. And now we have to focus and make sure that the vultures don't come in and take from us. There have been people skeptical about it, telling me, oh, it's just nobody's trying to come and take your land and blah, blah, blah. No, they are here. Not one state representative, not one state official has come out to check on us. I just came from a meeting run by the governor. All these developers were talking about, they were like fast track their development. And they're not fucking helping the people over here. There was not one conversation in this meeting about the people. The people. 
40 billion dollars go to Ukraine. Thing coming to us, but nobody's still here for take care of us. We're suffering. All this shit we gotta do on our own. Right now, the Maui community is helping the Maui community. It's really affected me because where is the president? Aren't we Americans too? Like, we're, why are we being ignored? We want to stay here. We don't want to be displaced any more than we already have been. I strongly urge all of our people to come together. We will make it happen. We will make it happen. Yeah, fairly powerful stuff there. Apologies for some of the swear words that I that got through my editing. Um, and, you know, again, take note of the fact that billions are being given to foreign aid for the Ukraine. And I think it was something like $700 that uh, went towards the the individuals in Lahaina. It does seem that there's something wrong with uh, with those figures and with the way things have been have been handled. Just going to uh, start another little clip here from this one is from Fox News. Not that I give uh, the mainstream kind of news channels very much credibility. I think uh, you know they just tell one side of a story. But this was an interesting. Well, well, while life in West Maui remains uncertain, one thing is for sure: residents are furious over the local government's response. You see, typically when there's a fire, you use water to put it out, but Maui's Department of Land and Natural Resources delayed the release of water to landowners to help protect their property from the wildfire. In fact, they even disputed the release of water for hours after the West Maui Land Company made a request to release it. Maui survivors are even telling reporters they had to grab water out of their toilets to fend off the flames. I was grabbing water out of the toilet. I was grabbing water out of my Brita filter in the refrigerator. It's a kind of disconcerting feeling when the fire guys show up and they don't have water. According to the deputy director of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, Kaleo Manuel, water isn't a tool. We've become used to looking at water as like something which we use and not necessarily something w that we revere. But that's totally different in this, this Western capitalistic kind of economy that we live in. It's very extractive, um, individualistic approaches let water connect us and not divide us like we we can share it but it requires true conversations about equity last time i checked water puts out fires progressive mumbo jumbo doesn't this is going to be a multi-year recovery it's going to take essentially years to rebuild lahaina which was destroyed but we will build it back better and we'll build it back proudly build back better building back better to build back better we're going to build it back better and build it back better my plan to build back better and i have to say in my memory you were one of the most engaged and hardest working participants here at the annual meeting i i watched you uh, in the morning up to midnight sometimes, one engagement after the other. So what we're listening to here is a little clip of a fellow called Klaus Schwab talking to a Joe Biden a few years back. And Klaus Schwab is a member of a huge organization called the World Economic Forum. And just leading into that second part of the clip, we have some voices that you might have recognized there, Clinton, Obama, Biden again, using the phrase build back better. And I'm beginning to pick this up as a little bit of a catchphrase in relation to restructuring how we live as a society. And this catchphrase has also been used in Australia. So what I do want to do is uh, encourage people to keep their ears open when they're hearing these kind of uh, phrases on the television. Well, we'll just continue at the end of this clip. Dr. Schwab, I'm flattered you'd ask me to keynote. Uh, there's an expression in my old neighborhood back in the United States. This may be above my pay grade. It's not above yours, though. You've written extensively on the topic that you've asked me to speak to. Mastering the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And you see, the difference of this fourth 
uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing it changes you if you take a genetic editing right. uh, just as an example it's you who exactly. are changed yeah. and of yeah. course this has a big impact yeah. on your identity so yeah, there's Mr. Schwab again talking about his plans for the future. And to put things in perspective, if, if you don't know much about this fella, this fella has put near most of the politicians that are even in Australia, New Zealand, England, Germany, to mention a few, through a program called Young Global Leaders. Many of our Australian politicians are graduates of that. So to, to give some perspective of, the, of this, you could argue that uh, this fellow and the World Economic Forum are actually far more powerful than indimid- individual governments. And it's certainly when we're, when we're looking at uh, people um, he, that Schwab is talking to, give him such deference, it's quite incredible. There, there's, uh, there certainly seems to be a, a power imbalance almost when when this fella does engage with world leaders. And what I'm essentially pointing out there is uh, that he, to anybody who might be observing, would seem to be the person in control. And we're talking about uh, in control of uh, presidents and prime ministers. And I often wonder, in Australia, when we see these outrageous um, uh, policies creeping in, who, you know, do we do we really have our own leaders in this country in control of the country or are they being told what to do because they've been run through these programs and then given positions in order to kind of further different agendas but uh, we'll, we'll just continue again we'll just uh, get a few more clips that tip there was, uh, was a very short clip of um the skyline in Maui and it in it's almost really just a hard to describe as I said if, if people do want to see this uh, I, I will post these videos but it just looked like a direct beam coming from the sky in and around the time of the fires and again that could be CGI it could be made up it could be to to fuel the people who are a little bit more suspicious but um just in relation to, to how far we've gotten in the show so far, adding everything up, would it be so incredible to think that uh, that we know this technology is, exists? It's absolutely there. We know that uh, these corporations wanted that land. They made it very clear, and the elders said absolutely no. And now, conveniently, we see that this this land specifically in the area that these people wanted is now it's been erased the houses have been erased I'm not sure if too many people know what Maui is a, is a very uh, sought after place and lots of very very rich celebrities have their houses on Maui Oprah owns a house Zuckerberg Beezus, um to mention just a few and every single one of these very rich people's houses they were untouched by flames. There were some corporations there, like uh, just from, like from memory, I can't quite remember which ones. And again, some of these big uh, big stores were also untouched by these fires. These fires were very, very specific. Uh, we're just going to uh, just run into another clip here. Fox News alert. You're not going to believe what kind of obnoxious story the president just told the people of Hawaii. Listen. I don't want to compare difficulties, but we have a little sense, Kill and I, what it's like to lose a home. Years ago, now 15 years ago, I was in Washington doing Meet the Press. It was a sunny Sunday. And lightning struck at home on a little lake that's outside of our home, on a lake, a big pond, and hit the wire and came up underneath our home into the heat ducts, the air conditioning duct. Okay, Biden never lost his home from a lightning strike. He had a small kitchen fire that was contained in less than 20 minutes. And the fact that he went to Hawaii with almost a thousand people missing, over a hundred dead, and no one has a home anymore, and said, I lost my home too, a lie, when there was a small kitchen fire, that was pretty disgraceful. 
Yeah, I think that reporter says it all. That's another report from Fox News, by the way. And it almost just shows the, the disregard or the disconnect that a so-called high-profile politician, the leader of a country, has for for Maui. At the very least, he's not taking it seriously. But, uh, you know, it almost smacks of, of just, uh, just a, a, an elite type of attitude towards these poor people who have just absolutely lost everything. Um, when I watch that, and I've seen it now a few times, I'm absolutely disgusted. And we just have a clip here of um, FEMA. And uh, we're, I'm just going to play this first. Facing the usual grilling from journalists, the emergency management agency had its own employees, you see them sitting down right there, pretend to be reporters and ask the questions. FEMA calls it an error in judgment. I understand the Department of Homeland Security says something very different. A strong response from the Department of Homeland Security, which oversees FEMA, and I want to read part of it, quote, this is inexcusable and offensive. Face. So there we have the, the, the emergency usual. management, um, the, one of the biggest organizations that are meant to help out in emergencies. And what they've done is they essentially just mocked up uh, a, a press conference using their own employees to deliver whatever narrative they, they wanted. Um, so th the list of underhand uh, type of uh, goings on in Maui is it's just see it's going on and on and on and I think quite rightly the the uh, the, the residents there are <laughs> disgusted with the, the response and you, you the thing that you know kind of jumps out to me is is we're really not seeing this side of the story um, I kind of don't stay away from uh, mainstream media usually I don't have a television why not I kind of qu I'm quite happy with that, but I do keep an eye on the the news reports and these kind of things. They're they're not really being brought to the fore. Here's an, a little bit more commentary about uh, some of the things that were happening uh, during these fires in Lahaina. Look behind you! Insane! Whoa! Did you see that just shoot across? Did anyone else see that? Everything's it's windy and then there's a flash and I think that's when a tree's falling on a power line, the, the power goes out, their generator kicks in, the camera comes back online and then the forest is on fire. little clip here it actually shows the water uh, boats on fire and there were reports of the water on fire also so with bushfires we have to ask ourselves how can that happen and this next clip is going into another aerial photograph where you can see the destruction from the air very very clearly and one of the things that really stands out that some people have commentated on is in one of the areas where these houses burned, it's almost a perfect oval of fire. And these these clips were taken from uh, the news channels. Um, but yeah, this this perfect oval of fire, it just really seems quite incredible. I'm not, I'm not sure how we can explain that as a natural phenomenon. Uh, that the just to kind of reiterate that this damage it was so specific and in an area that we know that corporations were hungry to to take from people for a long time. Um, it, it all really just is adding up to to a very sinister situation. How could 
cars are incinerated in this type of way. That a natural fire can literally cremate every single thing in its supposed path. I've never seen anything like this in my life and I'm genuinely asking a question to anyone that has any kind of knowledge or experience in firefighting or anything like these natural disasters. Is this a natural occurrence that this can possibly happen? Something that can look like an apocalypse came through, that something just literally incinerated everything in its path. Can someone please comment below? If you have experience in anything like this, have you ever seen anything like this? This is actually from a woman walking through the destruction. And the cars she's walking past have their engine blocks melted. The aluminium rims are melted. What, what kind of wildfire can do something like that? Um, I certainly you know, have uh, very strong suspicions that, that maybe this was, this was not a natural occurrence. And the people in Maui are obviously concerned as well this car and what's surrounding it and how temperatures could reach this level creating this amount of melting of aluminum I'm here with Donovan he is a I believe a, a hero of sorts Aloha Donovan Aloha. He was, he's the one that brought it to my attention that we have these these very strange occurrences we just shot down on the highway I don't know if it was actually live but um, we have it all recorded so we're gonna post it we're, we're at another one of these locations so this is well above the burn zone essentially in a neighborhood known as Lahaina Luna. I'm going to show you around real quick so you can see the scenario and then judge for yourself. And again, if you enjoy content like this, I encourage you to please like the channel, subscribe, and share the video so you can get the truth of what's going on here at Maui. So where I'm at right now, just to orientate you, you can see the lights for the football stadium right there at Lahaina Luna. So we're right below Lahaina Luna High School in the neighborhood that did not, I repeat, did not burn. You can see all these houses are standing around here unburned there's no burn here okay so to me this is like something out of a out of a space movie because you have this small field right with some grass yeah, that burned that right well, you can yeah. see where the grass burned but then you have these two vehicles sitting so in here like that have melted oh, yeah it's aluminum. aluminum so donovan if you want to just take us through this car real quick and show us i know you know a few things about cars you can point out some things that that require a very high temperature. By the way, we just talked to the neighbor who was talking to an investigator in, in uh, Lahaina Town yesterday, and he said the investigator told him the temperatures reached in excess of 3,000 degrees. So tell us what you got, Donovan. Well, we have about 300 degrees for aluminum, and this aluminum- 300? 1,300. 1,300, okay, thank you. 1,300, well, 12, 1,220, but if you round it up, because it was not only melted, it was liquefied to the point where it it, it became a, a, river, a river of aluminum going down the dirt hill. So this is the aluminum rim, obviously. There's the tire, what's left of it, the steel threads or steel, and, steel belts. And maybe combination gas tank if the gas tank's aluminum. Okay, okay. Um, so you have liquefied aluminum running down the side of a grass fire. The caliper, caliper melted, unless they stole it. But it, it looks like the bolts are still there. So that, and then you get the belt, the steel belts of the tire which is just a bunch of a wire mesh laying there. And you have the windows that were melted, the back window. If you look at the big old, like, almost like. The glass is just melted. Yeah, it was it's ripping. This is uh, almost what you would see if you put a car in an incinerator. But this is not surrounded by a bunch of structure fires or anything. Yeah, there's, that no, there's no fuel. So besides the gas that was in the tank, what's your theory on what could create temperatures of this level in the middle of a, a field? Anomaly, I think is the word. So this is the second anomaly. That yeah, I'm it's saying. just it, that's why I stopped. I looked at it, I'm like, okay, house, 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 house. Nothing's burned, and then you have melted steel and glass, and then the only thing that is left is the the steel, the thick steel frame, and then the steel sheet metal. So I don't know if you guys have figured this out yet, but the media has not been given access to Lahaina Town. Everything is locked up. Matter of fact, this gentleman next door, he was on Front Street yesterday and he was supposed to get access. And then the mayor shut it down because people were taking pictures. So they don't want pictures taken of anything in Lahaina Town because they don't want you to see this, this would be my guess. 
because the more that you take a look at this, and especially in this scenario, if there was a car like this in the middle of Lahaina, you might think to yourself, well, okay, it was in the middle of this major burn. There's an animal that died here or something. I'm smelling a, that, that, that yeah, must like, be a cat that was under there. That smells like a dead something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that is so Maybe. sad. That is so sad. That's someone's dog. Oh. So now we have another vehicle right next to it. Talk to me about this one, Don. Yeah, what are you seeing? It's symmetrical with the other one. Yes. They're pretty much identical. I mean, the heat is just tremendous, tremendous heat. Melting glass, melting metal, incinerating the tires to the point of, you know, the only thing you see is the, the steel belts, which actually fall apart like spaghetti noodles when you, when you touch it. So the media is not allowed in here. No one's allowed in Lahaina town. So the only way this message is going to get out right now is if you, until your fingers bleed for America, start sharing this video. Look what it did to the steering wheel. I mean, still, I mean, all it is is the steering column. We the people is all we got left here. And the more we get the word out and the more people start seeing this crazy anomaly, and it, we're seeing it in a lot of different places. Donovan here has been on a scooter. He was at the uh, scene of the crime the day of the fire. He was helping people rerouting them away from Lahaina as the, the, the cops had not blocked the southbound traffic until you got almost to Front Street. Grass. And notice <laughs> the green grass here. Now, it's only been two weeks. I don't know if that's two that's weeks, two weeks of growth. Is that two weeks of growth? We have that's green grass. You think is that two weeks ago? Okay, maybe it is. But there's a lot of green grass here. I don't know. Yeah, someone, a... someone tell me how fast does grass grow? Is that two weeks of growth? Someone dumped some trash in there, right? I wonder who did yeah. that. It's kind of weird. Some nice people. Some nice people? Yeah. But if you don't share this story, I don't know who will, man. Someone's got to start putting this out to the people that can help. I've had people tell me, hey, you guys got to go do something. Really? We just got like a little 5G back and it doesn't even work. We, every phone call we make drops, right? Do you, do you hear what's going on here? Do you, are you hearing me loud and clear? They are creating a situation where it's impossible for us to communicate. Right now, I'm on a Starlink that's in the back of my truck over there. Thank you, David Crawford. So that's the reason I'm able to transmit this message, assuming you're getting it. If you're not, I have it recorded and I'll, Come on. I will post it after we go live. See if you can get down and let's see inside the, the motor. Does this the hood come up? Oh, no, the motor's melted. The motor's gone. It looks like the block is melted. And what's the block made out of? Um, probably aluminum. Probably aluminum. If it melted, yeah. An iron block usually would hold, would hold out a little bit longer. I mean, is it possible that they're making these cars with uh, different types of materials that just have a lower melting point? But even if they did, oh, look at, it wouldn't make any sense because we're in a field with uh, just a little block, bit of grass. The block is still there. It turns sideways. The block is still but there? But the, uh, the aluminum valve cover is still, is still melted to death. So can a grass fire... But how does it burn underneath the hood? That's the thing. Underneath the hood is protecting it from heat, right? Or no, oxygen. Oxygen. You can't oxygen. get in there. Right. So you have no combustion. And again, if you're just tuning into this live, the edge of the fire went to that little grass. This is all. This was all just grass. No trees. You can see a couple of trees right there. It just went to the edge of the sidewalk. I mean, not even to the sidewalk. It just went inside of this fence, and then it stopped right before it got to this guy's thing, this guy's house. And just to orientate you here, you can see the roadblock of the National Guard right there. That is where the fire burn area starts at the top, uh, not the top, but of La Hena Luna. Sorry, guys. I'm all over the map here. That, if you can see that blockade, that is, that's actually where the burn zone is. So the fire was down there, okay? The fire was down there. This is above the bypass. We're above the bypass. The fire was below the bypass. There was no fire here, except for this little tiny field. Supposedly it only started a quarter mile away. So I'm curious, is there a point where things become too coincidental to be considered a coincidence? So... First, we had the fires in Maui, and regardless of what you believe was the cause of those fires, one thing that has come out is that Maui is set to be the first smart island. Well, now we have fires burning in Kelowna, and what do we see here? Kelowna was Canada's first 5G smart city. The smart city was installed in 2020 
And since then, they've been working hard on smart, intelligent initiatives. And now we've got the city of Kelowna saying that actually they're not only a smart city, but they want to move from a smart city to an intelligent city. And here you can see they say, while smart cities focus on technology to improve the way that cities operate, an intelligent city is a municipality that focuses on finding collaborative and innovative solutions to complex and shared community problems, often with the aid of technology. So what are the odds that we have two fires in two places within a week's time? And both of these places have initiatives to become smart, intelligent cities governed and ran by AI. It is literally the implementation of 15-minute cities, Agenda 2030, the Great Reset, whatever you want to call it. Now, another one of these pesky coincidences is that Kelowna, as you can see here, has said they have an answer to speed up housing, get humans out of the way. They are utilizing Microsoft AI to approve new housing and new construction. How convenient if everything is burned down and you want to build and construct an intelligent city, you now use Microsoft AI instead of humans to approve any new builds. So since 2022, Kelowna has been working in partnership with Microsoft on developing an AI chatbot that receive applications for construction and renovations, analyze, and decide if they can issue permits within three minutes, it says. Now, where else have we seen somewhere that was just ravaged by fire also working with Microsoft AI? Yep, Lahaina. They are using Microsoft AI solutions to evaluate the fire damage. So you know, at risk of sounding like a conspiracy theorist, what are the odds that two cities have damaging fires within a week of each other, both set to be smart, intelligent cities, both utilizing Microsoft's AI? Is this the burn back better plan? This is uh, just basic science here from a, from a, a simple search on the internet. What is color? When light hits an object, the object reflects some of that light and absorbs the rest of it. Some subjects reflect more of a certain wavelength of light than others. That's why you see a certain color. For example, a lemon reflects mainly yellow light. And in the same manner, we could say that blue reflects mainly blue light, which leads us to some of these next clips. Now here's a laser and it's attempting to burn green shrubbery and almost nothing is happening. When it hits the wood, the wood does become flammable. But look green how light. the reaction is when the laser touches the aluminium and the steel and the plastic. These are little toy cars, so they also have rubber. And the reaction is, is very, very strong compared to the wood. But again, just note that the green shrubbery doesn't appear to burn. The audio quality in that clip wasn't the best, but the person narrating described that the blue material underneath was wet or damp, and that's the reason why it didn't burn. So could we assume that because of the moisture in the foliage, that that's the reason why that didn't burn? But take a look at this next clip. Again, we have a laser on different colored materials. And if we assume that the laser has a blue light source, we can see that the blue piece of material is left undamaged when the laser passes over it. And from what I gather, lasers are often used to cut denim and denim materials. And because the denim is blue, a filter is needed for them to be effective with the blue material. What kind of shirt survives a fire like that, I wonder? A shirt that says Sista Revolution. <laughs> Hard to believe, huh? A whole building goes down. A whole street goes down and then these shirts survive somehow. The Sista. 
revolutions. A lot of them, actually. That's crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to auction these shirts off. The last surviving apparel from Maui. Hey guys, this is the last episode I'm going to do for a while, but it should be a pretty good one. It's things that did not burn during the fire. I went through hours of footage, and it was pretty interesting what I found. Here are the famous umbrellas. These are actually Tommy Bahama umbrellas, and I have pictures of these before the fire, so you can see what they actually used to look like. Not very different now. And then the sole surviving car on Front Street in front of the outlet mall and I actually found another sole survivor car the other direction that's a little bit further south on Front Street, which I didn't notice at the time, but here it is right here. You can see it on the left in this frame here. Anyway, I'm going to just roll some of this footage. Most of this is unreleased. It doesn't really work that well with TikTok because this is all shot in 16.9, but uh, I, I've got hundreds of gigabytes, uh, many, many hours of footage, both on the... Another clip here, just going that goes on and on. It's, it's uh, tough to watch, actually. Clips here of the damage to all these boats in the water. Again, I'm not sure how wildfires can jump across water and destroy boats. If you really wanted to take land from people, you would, might target just about everything they have to make sure that uh, the possibility of them building back and kind of regaining where they were at is taken from them. So, uh, you know, you, you, you might actually um, target boats and whatnot. This is from a, this is another clip, which is again, very, very concerning from an old fella. And uh, just listen to hear to, to what he has to say. Cars were lined up, but none of them were moving. And I walked all the way from Safeway to the chart house. Not one car had moved. And I was wondering what was stopping the traffic. Well, it was a policeman. And I got to the end and I looked up north, there were no obstructions, there was no reason to keep those cars there. Are you serious? I'm serious as a heart attack. And I, I said, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm under orders to keep them here. And I said, the fire is, is right around Safeway. It's going to hit Front Street. You know, these people got to get out of here. And he said, I'm following orders. No way. And I, so I just kept walking. I, well, maybe he knows something I don't, you know, so... And I keep walking down the highway, and I look behind, no cars are coming out. I walked all the way to Waikuli Beach, still no cars coming out. And I started hearing boom, boom, boom. And then I heard people screaming and stuff. You're saying they were blockaded in by the police at the end of Front Street? Yeah. Like where the restaurant is? Right, where the chart house Where was. the chart house was, I should right. say. They, there was a blockade there, and they could not go any further. Right. I walked, what the I said, hell? I walked all the way from Safeway to there, not one car had moved. Absolutely it's incredible burning. there, isn't it? That uh, it seems that the, the police had blockaded the exit to the area that was burning. And uh, this, this old fella had to walk to the end to get out and kind of leave his car. Um, again, make of that what you will. Here's another little clip here from, uh, from a woman who, who uh, experienced the disaster. Burning alive in the streets. There were people dead in the water. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of people that died. What they're telling you in the news is not true, and I lived it firsthand. Again, interesting that uh, the news reports that we're getting don't seem to correlate with what uh, what some of these reports that are coming out from from uh, Maui. They turned off the said drill. FEMA had a drill that started the day before the fires and finished the day after the fires. And the man who was supposed to turn the sirens on wasn't on the island at the time. Just so contrived, folks, and so staged. The children were told to go home from school. They were sent home from school and their parents were not alerted that they were sending their children home. And the children went home and the kids didn't know how to evacuate. They're there without their parents. 
the kids didn't yeah it's quite interesting isn't it uh, how it just seems like uh, you know one mess up after another um, in relation to the way the situation was handled <laughs> More clips of uh, the kind of the cars just incinerated, and they, that really stands out. And I'm not sure if uh, people people are aware, but um, children were actually sent home from school on the day of the fires. There was no emergency warning that happened on the day of the fires. So these children went home while their parents were not at home, with no idea of how to evacuate. And uh, I'm I'm hearing a lot of stories of of uh, you know these these children who essentially burned alive because uh, you know they, they they were home alone and uh, their parents probably couldn't get back to the houses to save them we're not really hearing about that in the mainstream are we seconds I'm gonna try to go as fast as I can I'm a flight attendant I'm in Maui I got picked up by my shuttle driver to go to the hotel earlier and he was just explaining all the tragic events obviously that have happened this week in Maui with the fires he was saying that the news isn't even covering the gifs of it and that the news has only confirmed 103 bodies dead as of today. So again, a flight attendant. I mean, you know, these, these people could be crackpots. They could be making this stuff up. Hawaii states our goal is to rebuild and make the entire island of Maui the first smart island. They want the entire island governed by AI is outlined in the Hawaii Digital Government Summit of 2023 that they plan to host next month on september 25th 2023 on maui wow now they're going to come with a rescue for this horrible problem and last january in 2023 there was a smart city conference in maui to turn maui again into the smart city island pushing everything electric making 15 minute smart cities and there was also a contract last year to build a high-rise condo complex and businesses in lahaina which is a historic town that couldn't have any new development in this area. But now it's demolished. So now I guess they have to rebuild. Yeah, there you have it. Another report of um, a possible motive for this fire to be maybe deliberate. Another little clip here I'll play. Not that long ago, Hawaiian government officials in the areas that were just affected by the wildfires passed a law saying that that land could not be redistricted for new building permits unless some sort or some type of a serious natural disaster occurred. Serious natural disaster occurred. And what did we have happen through those three districts of very sacred land to the Hawaiians? A very serious natural disaster. People called their insurance companies after the fire and the insurance companies for the first time informed them that there was zoning infractions on their land so they would not honor their insurance policies. And within 24 hours of these people losing their homes, the same developers who the Hawaiian elders fought in court to have that law passed are already calling these people and making them offers for their homes. This is what happens when the government sticks their fingers in everything. The government's in the insurance industry. They're talking to people who are paying for their campaigns, which are the buyers of this land. And they say to these people, hey, let us know when they call you to get their insurance claims and let us know when you deny them so we can then give them a call right away and scoop in and swoop in and be the heroes. So they're gonna get this land that they're gonna develop into millions of dollars worth of property, fuck off. They're gonna get screwed over. And this happens everywhere. There's too many coincidences for this not to be shady. Wake up. So people essentially have everything destroyed and the insurance companies use a loophole to say we can't pay you out we are not going to give you money to rebuild your house and then within hours these big developers pick up the phone to these residents and make them offers that essentially they can't refuse 
And as that fellow there said, um, yeah, a lot of coincidences there, isn't there? This is Maui, Hawaii today. They claim that this is a wildfire. But how can a wildfire burn houses and cars to the ground and leave trees and grasses behind? What we are actually witnessing is directed energy weapons in action. They show us this in plain sight, but people don't even realize this. They use a plane with an airborne laser, and we've seen this before. Here you can see the same situation in California in 2018. Is it coincidence that what we are witnessing in California in 2018 is the same situation in Maui, Hawaii? Buildings burn to the ground, yet trees are fine. Wake up guys, this is all the cause of directed energy weapons. Not too sure what we think of all that, hey? Again, I'm not making any kind of um, too many assumptions here. I'm just uh, putting information out in front of people. And, uh, you know, maybe it's a Monday morning. I'm going a little bit crazy myself and uh, just uh, add, putting two and two together and making um, a lot more. But uh, I think just if, if you if you if you really do have a, a think about it, just collectively, all this information that I've kind of presented to you this morning, it, it's it's not it's not painting a comfortable picture is it again i'm more than happy for people to to you know discredit what i'm saying um i i will throw it out there that you know this this could be crazy people making stuff up putting collages in and uh and to get views on tiktok uh you know to that there there is i guess uh, you know interest in the whole conspiracy theory uh, type of thing so you know, if I do kind of post this material and people want to debunk it, absolutely feel free, and I'll be the first person to put my hand up and say, I'm I'm uh, making far too much of uh, of the situation that happened in Maui. But um, again, the other side of that story is, am I? I'm kind of getting to the end of the hour here now, and uh, the other thing that I just wanted to quickly mention before we run out of time here is uh, this yes vote in Australia, this voice to parliament. And uh, this was, uh, Ben Fordham was reporting this on his channel. This just sounds dodgy. When we go and vote on the voice, we're asked to put yes or no on the piece of paper. But they're now saying to us, if you put a tick, that will count as a yes. But if you put a cross, that won't count as a no. I need to be very clear with people. Um, when we look at that, it is likely that a tick will be accepted um, as a formal vote uh, for yes, but a cross will not be accepted as a formal vote. That's Tom Rogers, the boss of the Electoral Commission, talking on Sky News. And when Sky News' Tom Connell pointed out this was unfair, he didn't seem to get it. Does that effectively correct, inflate the, the, the yes side? The no side might say, well, hang on, you're, it's a lower bar for the yes side. No, not at all, and they couldn't be taken that way, but that's why we're spending uh, a lot of time talking to the community about what constitutes a valid vote. But surely if you're going to accept ticks, you've got to accept crosses, or just have a blanket rule, no symbols whatsoever. Tony Abbott's on the line. It's quite simple. I, I would have thought you either vote yes or you vote no, and I certainly are urging people to vote no, but, but the problem with all of this is that there's a suspicion, Ben, that officialdom is trying to make it easier for one side. And this is the worry all along, that um, there, is a, there is a lot of official bias in this whole referendum process. You will be allowed, or your vote will be counted, if you put a tick, which is a kind of an affirmative uh, action but if you put a cross which is a, a negative reaction to your vote it won't be counted now why would that be and it seems to be that uh, there's a huge push for a yes vote from all these different areas and would we kind of put it past the powers that be especially in relation to the evidence that I just uh kind of explained before about how the agencies like the World Economic Forum have a huge role to play. 
And for those that don't know, the the implications of a yes vote means that Australia, which has a constitution, its constitution can be amended. And we had Albanese refer to a one page which he barely looked into to say the voice was okay. And then we find out there's another 20 odd pages sitting around that he hasn't looked at. And essentially what it what it, it seems to me to do is to give future powers free reign to amend the constitution and essentially do whatever they want. And as far as I'm concerned, this uh, is a direction for corporations to and global entities to have free reign in Australia. And that's already happening. We see our our airports getting sold off. We see our water getting sold off. Our ports getting sold off. You know, China is a, is a, is owns a fair part of Australia. How much? How many more external huge entities are there? that are not working for the interests of the people, but are working for their corporate interests and their corporate greed. And, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, most people were in a position where they can buy a house. Now what's happening? We've got 30, 40, 50 year olds living at home. We, we have uh, wages higher than ever, but at the same time, the cost of living has shot up, even though things might have appeared harder 30, 40 years ago, or, or kind of abundance and our access, access to be independence, independent has been destroyed in Australia. Um, for young people, th- they, can, they can't get out of debt. And that's all very, very convenient, isn't it, for, for uh, these, these larger powers. Uh, so bear that in mind. Look into it. Look into how you're voting. If you feel strongly about this voice to parliament this this uh you know vote yes and um it seems to be that it's it's weighted towards pushing for that yes vote so be careful of what you're doing when you're uh, looking at those ballot papers we'll wrap it up now i'll close out with a little bit of music soon you've been listening to awakening in health this morning and my name is dennis o'connor you can reach me at dennis at awakening in health that's the e double n i s if you have any queries or even in fact if you want to refute any of the information that I've given to you this morning and uh, yeah I hopefully will be back next week with um, with uh, some hopefully more uplifting news and information